chapter 23, verse 1. Sarah lived to be 127 years old. She died at Kiriah Arba, known as Hebron, in the land of Canaan. And Abraham went to mourn for Sarah and to weep over her. Okay, she died at Kiriath Arba, which is Hebron, and uh, Kiriath Arba means the, uh, the dwellings of Arba, I believe. Anyway, um, excuse me, I had to burp there. Anyway, she was 127 years old when she died. She had a child at 90, so uh, she died when uh, Isaac was 27, uh, 37 years old, I guess. Anyway, um, uh, as I said, and I don't know if I said, I think I said it in this class, is that Sarah is not mentioned again in Abraham's life after Genesis 22 when he went up to sacrifice um, Isaac on the altar, right? And uh, uh, he's not mentioned, uh, she's not mentioned again. The Jewish people say it's because what Abraham did was disobedience, taking his son and binding him and uh, uh, taking him as a sacrifice, okay? When, in fact, that's not the case. He was obedient to the Lord. But the Jewish people, in order to dismiss this account, because it so clearly points to the work of God in Jesus, they say that Sarah never spoke to him again. They had this big rift in their, their marriage. When in fact, the only reason why Sarah isn't mentioned again, we discuss this, why was Sarah not mentioned again after the Isaac account? Because it wasn't important to the point of Her life isn't, yeah, it has no bearing on the rest of the biblical account pointing to Jesus. That's, not, that's why she's not mentioned. It has nothing to do with somebody, uh, you know, uh, saying that Abraham was disobedient and whatever. It's just crazy thinking. She had no bearing on the future part of the Bible, okay? Doesn't mean she's not a great person, but what she did, you know, just wasn't worthy of recording in the Bible. It's like Mary, after the book of Acts chapter 2, when they all met in the upper room, her name is mentioned, she's never mentioned again. Because she is not the focus of Scripture. Amen. Jesus Christ, let us fix our eyes on Jesus. All right? Um, and it says here, um, uh, Abraham came to mourn Sarah and to weep for her. All right? Go ahead, please. Ch <coughs> verse 3. Person yeah, whoever. Then Abraham rose from dead side, from beside his dead wife and spoke to the Hittites. He said, I am an alien and a stranger among you. Sell me some property for a burial site here so I can bury my dead. Okay, real quickly. He says, I am a stranger and an alien among you. What does that tell us? Um, it, 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 something was told to Abraham earlier by God. This isn't his home. This, this isn't your home, and you will be persecuted 400 years, and then the people who, uh, you know, are in the land will be uh, driven out by you after 400 years, okay? Mm -hmm. So he's just confirming in this word right here that he is just an alien, just as God said that he would be. And all of his descendants for 400 years would be until the time of the conquest of Canaan. And why? Because the sins of the Canaanites is not heaped up yet, okay? God is being merciful, allowing them to repent and turn back to him. There's a point where their sins will be heaped up to a point where they will be destroyed, and it's not there yet. So, and the sons of Heth, or the Hittites, as it says in his version, are some of the people that were destroyed by the uh, conquerors coming into Canaan at the time of Joshua. Anyway, um, go ahead, verse uh, 5. The Hittites replied to Abraham, Sir, listen to us. You are a mighty prince among us. Bury your dead in the choicest of our tombs. None of us will refuse you his tomb for burying your dead. Okay, the term there, a mighty prince, is literally a prince of God among us, just so you know. Okay, verse 7. Then Abraham rose and bowed down before the people of the land, the Hittites. He said to them, If you are willing to let me bury my dead, then listen to me and intercede with Ephron, son of Zohar, on my behalf. So he will sell me the cave of Machpelah. Mm hmm which belongs to him and is at the end of this of his field. Ask him to sell it to me for the full price as a burial site among you. Okay, so Abraham has a place identified. You know, it doesn't say whether it was from divine inspiration or it's just something he wanted. You know, but there, whatever, there is a reason why this cave was in Abraham's heart and he wanted this particular place. He bowed down to all of them and he said, listen, if I have found this favor, if I'm really a prince of God in your sight, I would like you to intercede on behalf 
of me to Efron the Hittite and have him sell me this piece of property with the cave in it so I can bury my dead. Okay, um, And we're going to see the cunning of the Hitt Hittites here in just a minute. But that's what's going on. He's looking for a place to bury her. Go ahead, verse 10. Ephron the Hittite was sitting among his people and replied to Abraham in the hearing of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. No, my lord, he said, listen to me. I give you the field, and I give you the cave that is in it. I give it to you in the press in the presence of my people. Bury your dead. Okay, so Ephron is saying this is this is a way of negotiating. You'll actually see this go on today, even in parts of America, but you'll see it overseas especially. Is the guy says, No, 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 just take the field. It's yours. You're a great guy. It's yours. All right. He knows already that Abraham is not going to take this field for free. He already knows this. All right. He's just being he's trying to get Look a good. He's trying to look good so that he can get a better position later. Now, Abraham, at this point, I'm sure, I don't know this for a fact, but I'm sure that Abraham could have said, okay, I'll take the field and been done with it. But they know Abraham's character. He's not going to just do that. So anyway, we'll go on and see what happens here. Again, Abraham bowed down before the people of the land, and he said to Ephron in their hearing, listen to me, if you will. I will pay the price of the field. Accept it from me so I can bury my dead there. Okay, so he's saying, whatever the going rate of this field is, I will pay it. Okay, mm -hmm. just let me bury my dead there. All right, go ahead. Ephron answered Abraham, Listen to me, my lord. The land is worth 400 shekels of silver. But what is that between me and you? Bury your dead. Okay, he could have said, yes. the, 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 field, yeah, the, the, the field was probably worth about 20 shekels of silver. It wasn't, it wasn't worth certainly 400. That is an exorbitant amount of money. Okay, but he said, here he goes. He says, um, let me read it again just so we can get the, the, the feeling of it. He said, um, listen to me, the land is worth 400 shekels of silver when it is clearly not worth nearly that much, okay? What is that between me and you? Bury your dead. He's saying, I don't need that much money. Just go ahead and bury your dead. But he has set the price. That is what he's doing here. He is cheating Abraham. He's going to get, he knows Abraham wants this. He's already asked for it. He knows that Abraham is a wealthy guy. He's got all kinds of property. And whatever this guy says, you know, it would be like me going up and seeing, a, I love old cars. Mom knows this. I've had a lot of old cars in my life and antiques and racers and, and, uh, a, I just determined never to buy another old car, but I've had lots of them, beautiful old things. And uh, if I saw one that just, oh, you know, I'd walk up and it'd say it's worth $15,000, but it, it's the right paint, it's the, everything is right about it. The guy could say, oh, you know, it's only worth $120,000. And I'd be like, yeah, <laughs> paying it out. That is what he's doing here. He has set his price knowing that my eyes are glistening, my mouth is drooling, and I am yeah. going to buy that car. Yeah. Absolutely. So, but I, yeah, I'm done with old cars. Don't worry about it, Mom. Um, <laughs> yeah, she, last one she had in her garage for years. I drove it, what, three times? So, um, anyway, uh, where are we? Okay, please, go ahead. Abraham agreed to Ephron's terms and weighed out for him the price he had named in the hearing of the Hittites. 400 shekels of silver, according to the weight current among the merchants. Okay, so he's bought it, and it, it's uh, the shekels of silver, or the weight among the merchants. And what they used to do is they had, um, uh, you know, a, a balance. They had one of those things there, and they 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 would check the weight against these balances, and then you'd weigh it out from there. So they would take a, a known standard and set it out. And God in the Bible will talk about people deceiving yes. with weights that are not valid. Yeah. So what they do is they pull out a bag with weights that are less or more. I'm trying to think of which one, and they put that rock on the uh, the balance instead of the actual one, and they would cheat people out of a, you know a couple grains of silver. You do it a hundred times, and you got a lot of silver, right? And so God talks about people doing this, and I don't have the reference right now. I didn't think to check that before coming here today, but God says that that is that is he hates that. He hates that. It's extremely deceitful, and and uh, it's an abomination to him. And uh, but that is what they're doing here. Is they they check against a standard shekel, and then they weigh out the money from there. Anyway, go ahead, please. So Ephraim's field in Mephelah near Mamre, both the field and the cave in it, and all the trees with the borders of the field, was, in, was deeded to Abraham as his property, 
in the presence of all the Hittites who had come to the gate of the city. Okay, you, you know, here's a question. Why is this account in here at all? Sarah died. He could have just said he buried her a, a field he bought. Why is this in here? Always ask yourself that when you're reading the Bible. Why is this in here? And I, I'll tell you what I think. I, I'm not saying this is correct, but this is what I think. I think it's in here because it, it bears on later other descendants are going to be buried there, and it bear, uh, bears on the fact that they have established a claim in the land, although they are still sojourners in the land, they have established a claim in the land. When they go back into the promised land, it will be their area. And um, in addition to that, it's like when David bought the, the uh, threshing floor of Arauna, which is where the Temple Mount is today. That is recorded and it is there for posterity. Now understand that this cave in Abraham's tomb is still known in Israel today. And Muslims make a claim against it and the Jews, you know, because they all trace their, their ancestry back to Abraham. So this all bears on even to the modern times, okay? And that's why this is in here. Yes? What's the significance of this whole thing being done in the presence of all the Hittites? Well, just so that they know. There's no doubt that he is, uh, that is his land, and it, it, it's in their presence. They, they have no claim against it. So hundreds of years later, when they come back into the land, they can't argue that he bought this property from them. Absolutely. And it's witnessed. And, you know, the thing about these things is when you read this in the Bible, this is a document. I don't care what anybody says. This is an ancient historical document. And because of that, people will argue against the Bible, but it, what they'll do is they'll say, well, you know, you can't prove that that's true. What's the problem with somebody saying, well, you can't prove that that's true in the Bible? It's not up to us to prove it's true. It's up to them to prove it's not true. And people use that argument against Christians all the time, and Christians get suckered into that. It is not up to us to validate the Bible. It's up to them to invalidate the Bible. And we need to remember that. Historically, archaeologically, uh, it, uh, deed, David's deed to the Temple Mount, people can argue that the Jews don't own it, but there is a document that says that the Jewish people, through the line of David, owns the Temple Mount. It is up to them to disprove it. And like I said, we get ourselves suckered into these things and then we end up going through all kinds of hurdles that should not be necessary in order to determine why we believe what we believe and why we substantiate what we do. If they say that um, this city was never there, that's not up to us to prove. That is up to them to disprove. And I'm telling you what, when they go out there and they get the shovel and they start digging, the city will invariably show up. It happens every single time. No historical evidence has ever been found, not one thing to disprove the Bible. That does not mean that everything in the Bible has been proven. Yeah. Only that nothing has been disproven. It is not our burden to carry. Our burden is to simply have faith that it's true and let them prove it untrue, which they will not. God will not allow his word to be invalidated. So keep that in mind. Don't be a sucker when people try that on you. Remember that, hey, you are making a category error. The category here is, is this true, not is this not true. You prove it's not true, okay? So there you go. Sorry to divert on that, you but... Yeah, you do the work. I have the document. This is the oldest document of its kind pertaining to the information we're talking about. You prove it's wrong. I don't need to prove it's right, okay? So anyway, please go ahead. Afterward, Abraham buried his wife Sarah in the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre, which is at Hebron, in the land of Canaan. So the field and the cave in it were deeded to Abraham by the Hittites as a burial site. Okay, so that's it. It's done, and we're going to see other people get buried there. And uh, it, you pronounced Hebron wrong. It's Hebron, okay? <laughs> yeah, you got to get a little phlegm out. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> Chapter 24. Well, we got right through 23. That took just a couple minutes. All right. And the Bible gets quicker and quicker. When we get to the Psalms, we're just going to be reading them and praising God because, you know. Anyway, please, go ahead. Verse 20, uh, Chapter 24. No. Anybody. <clears throat> Now Abraham was old, <coughs> well advanced in years, and the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. Okay, how old is he? 140. Well, 147. She was 137, is that right? And he was 10 years older? Well, she 
127, so he's 137. Yeah, he's about 10 years older, so he's about 140 years old. That's right.